A golf team fighting every day for their spot on the varsity roster. We talked to the Battle Mountain Boys golf team ahead of their season. We also introduced the scoreboard's newest member, Brett Ferraro, to the team. And finally, what better way to get to know your hosts than through scorching their taste buds? Matty Evans and I interview each other over some hot wings. It's all coming up right now on the scoreboard. Welcome into the scoreboard. I'm your host, Blake O'Rulian. We have got a packed show with hot wings, golf, and we are getting geared up for fall sports in the process. You won't want to miss it. We will be right back here on the scoreboard. We've got a very exciting little segment that we're going to do here. I'm one of the hosts here at TV8, Maddie Evans. We've got our sports director, Blake O'Rulian, joining us from Park City. What are we doing? We are going to be talking about our, our two shows, our two, our, the same show, I should say, but uh, uh, the two stations, I should say, and then also eating some hot wings in the process. It's going to be, it'll be fun. We'll see, we'll see how it looks. Uh, I think it's going to be a ton of fun, and so I'm going to read off the wonderful flavors that we have here. Are you ready? Go ahead. Go for it. All right. We've got Flying Monkey. These are in order from least spicy to most spicy. So we've got Flying Monkey. We've got Buffalo Bourbon. We've got Buffalo. We've got Chipotle Garlic. And then the doozy, the Inferno. Let's take a little sniff oh. test on this Inferno really quick, just so that we get... It's... It's a little bit, it's a little bit up there. It smells pretty acidic. It is, uh, it doesn't smell good. <laughs> it but, doesn't smell great. But it should be, it should be fun. All right, so we also have some other things in case the spice gets to be too much. We, uh, Mountain Blast, Powerade. Good luck. Um, and then we were told that if you use limes and salt, it'll take all of the heat away, so. We're hoping that this is really the savior here. We'll see how it goes. I feel like this is going to make it worse. I do too. Oh, I feel like it's maybe like a little prank. I think we have to try it now though. Um, we would like to thank Bob's Place for providing all of these sauces and the wings. And let's get going. So we'll grab a wing here. Okay. We'll dip it in the flying monkey. I'll just go right for this. And um, you know, what's your favorite part about scoreboard? Um, okay. Oh, they're boneless. Okay. Mm -hmm. This one's not that bad. Mm -mm. Favorite part about the scoreboard would just be getting to know these athletes, getting to talk to them, learning their stories, um, sitting down with them and really getting to like learn like how they came to be and what they want to do and, and their dreams and stuff like that. That's been the most rewarding part. What about you? I feel like getting to see these athletes kind of come up through their sport is really cool. Just in the last year, we've got to meet some incredible athletes from the community here in Vail, and they, watching them like go from competing at nationals to then making it to like the Paralympics, like our guy Thomas Walsh was mm -hmm. amazing this year. Unbelievable. How how'd you feel about that one? I feel like that one was... I feel like, oh, I told myself I was going to do this. Watch out for my microphone. I don't want to drip on my dress. <laughs> uh, I feel like that one wasn't bad at all. Not I feel a, like that one was like pretty sweet. Pretty normal. Pretty mild. Yeah, for sure. All right. So we're gonna move over to the Buffalo Bourbon now. Yep. Okay. We're gonna try this. All righty. So let me ask you, Maddie, what has been your favorite interview to do on the scoreboard? Oh man. I just got to interview Davis Hermes. Mm -hmm. And then right after I interviewed him, he won the Slackline Championship. That was a crazy interview. Mm hmm Learning about all the stuff that he's been up to. Again, that tastes like Barbecue Candy. sauce? Candy. Yeah. I feel like Flying Monkey was worse. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But this is the order, right? This mm -hmm. is Flying Monkey, Buffalo Bourbon, then we'll, we'll get into a little bit more with, with the Buffalo, I think, in just a little bit. I feel like we've set ourselves up. Like, these are what we're going to be drinking when yeah. it gets to be too hot. Oh, yeah. For sure. All right. We'll be looking forward to it. Okay. I'm going to break this one in half because it's pretty big. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, what has been your favorite interview? Oh, it's gotta be Dana White. I mean, that was that was one of the craziest things. I'm a huge MMA fan, and so the opportunity to go was kind of a last minute thing. And then to find out um, through actually a, a good, a really solid MMA media member to say, hey, if you wanna go do a one-on-one, -on -one, go over to Dana right now, he's like doing them. And so got the opportunity to talk to him, you know, just uh, crazy experience. Let's see. Mm. Your typical buffalo sauce. Mm -hmm. Nothing mm -hmm. crazy here yet, but I feel like these last two, I mean, if you can look on the overhead cam, I both know. of these look like they want to hurt you. <laughs> I mean, this one like looks like it's getting in the realm of possibilities for the pain. This one has like a little oil separation in it. Mm -hmm. That one makes me think that it's gonna be a little bit spicier than we're ready for. But just smelling the inferno is like... It, three times in, and I've flinched every single time. It's yeah. been horrible. Yeah, I think it's gonna be pretty brutal. What has been the most memorable moment from your sports career thus far? Oh man, I mean, I, I hate to, to go back to, to Dana White, so I'll, I'll refer to my, probably my number two, which is probably sitting down with the UFC welterweight Phil Rowe. Oh, it's Just, thick. <laughs> it's got like a, it like, looks like chili and it has the consistency of like a tomato bisque. Yeah. Oh. I, I just don't like the flavor of that one. It was not good. Yeah, I don't like that. No. A little more of a kick. A little bit more of a kick. Nothing crazy. That inferno is going to kill us. I know that for sure. But um, yeah, I'd say sitting down with Phil Rowe. I think just in terms of interviews, I've never had someone who's been so open mm -hmm. about everything, been able to just say everything that was on his mind be super interesting and kind and graceful with his time. We were supposed to go like 10 minutes. We went on for 45. Um, Holy cow. So, so we just talked shop for a very long time and it was very, very fun. What about you? You know, I would say we've got some pretty incredible local athletes here. Thomas Walsh being one of them. He brought in his silver medal. We got to hold it. It's way heavier than you anticipate. But uh, incredible snowboard cross athlete, Senna Lath has come in a few times and given us some information on what snowboard cross is and really div dive deep into kind of exactly what goes on there. And it's such an intense sport just mm -hmm. because they're like right on top of each other. There's no safety nets there. I don't know if you can feel it, but I'm starting to kind of sweat a little <laughs> bit. Are you feeling that? I don't know if it's the spice or if it's the lights though. <laughs> We'll so see how it goes. let's just jump right into this inferno. This is this is the last one, and I'm gonna I'm gonna do a full dip on this one. Right. I'm gonna do a full right. wing, and right. we're gonna go all the way in and see how this goes. So okay, so you, I should ask you a really good question. I know before. I need to ask you a question too. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, I think it's your turn. I think I, I asked yeah. the most memorable. Yeah, yeah. I'll ask you. What right. is? Diving. We're just gonna dive. Go ahead. Oh, this is gonna be terrible. All right, I'll wait till you. All right, Maddie, what is your most difficult part of your job in terms of dealing with sports on the scoreboard? We're gonna go all the way in. Mm -hmm. It's not bad yet. Okay. It gets progressively worse. Good. Um, We're gonna so go that's all fun. the way in on this one. I would say the most difficult part is. I grew up ski racing, so a lot of my background is on mountain sports. And um, to try and keep up and learn all the terminology and everything that comes with the other sports has been a fun challenge, mm -hmm. but a challenge that I've welcomed. How are you feeling over there? It progressively gets worse. It's coming up a little bit now. <clears throat> the I'm more gonna, you swallow, I'm gonna your, do own, another one. your own spit. Right. Oh, I don't fuck. care. I don't care. All right. What has been your biggest challenge in the sports? I'm gonna do another one. <laughs> oh man. I would say. Wait, just like close your mouth on it next time you put it in. I'm like, it fit. <laughs> His oh. lip is just a little bit quivering. Oh. We're gonna go again. <laughs> All right. I can see the sweat starting to bead a little bit. Are we getting some sweat now? I'm good. This is nothing. Okay. 
most di most difficult part. Mm -hmm. I'd say the most difficult part is just as as I came in this this December, mm -hmm. a lot of these kids didn't know who I was. Right. And so I would come and I'd interview them. I'd know all this stuff about them, and they probably were a little creeped out, maybe a little freaked out. But all I want to do is just tell these kids stories. Right. And so. Being it, wow, okay, this one did hit. Okay, I'm gonna keep going. <laughs> oh man, I feel like if you're challenging, then I have to challenge too. Cause I'm it not just a, makes it more fun. I'm not a baby. You're, but, you're doing great. Thank you. Um, so, I think early on, <laughs> I think early on, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go again. Mm -hmm. I'm just kidding. I might go a little bit more. Um, I think early on, the most difficult part was just getting these kids to trust me. Mm -hmm. No, hey, this kid's not gonna put anything out there that's that I say that I mess up. They're not gonna say anything that's, or they're not gonna make me look bad or anything like that, and that they could trust me. I've seen as I've talked to kids a second time that a lot of them have started to trust me. I'm not doing any of it. I'm good. Why? I'm, I'm good. I just want to make it as challenging as possible. What if this makes it worse? Oh yeah, it might make it worse. You you go first. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Great. Anyway, getting the kids to trust you. Getting the kids to trust me. Understand that we're here to try to do everything that they can so that they learn more about, um, so that other colleges can get to look at them. What's the... It doesn't make it better. It doesn't make it better. Now I'm yeah. actually going to start sweating. <laughs> <laughs> Was okay. that a joke? Do you think that they tried to... Oh, no. It like hurts for a second, and then you're so focused on the sour. That was great. This is going really well. Yeah, my nose is starting to run now. So, yeah, I think just building the kids' trust, letting them know that we're there for them. And I see coming into the second year, the second school year that I'm going to be doing this, um, I can see that they're starting to trust me more. They know who I am. They recognize the face. And the interviews are getting better and better. So it's going really well. It's going really well, which makes it really fun. And it's just a great way that we get to connect to the community. Mm -hmm. I think you should do the lime. I'm going to do the lime. I think that the lime is the way to go. Do I just like suck the juice out of it or? Yeah. Just like bite into it. I hate limes. I like, do. I do too. I don't mind limes, but I like hate maybe overpowering. Yeah. It's going to make your mouth feel much better. That's disgusting. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Well. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I want to like dip back into the inferno. Like that's. <laughs> All right. Well. Well, thanks so much for eating hot wings with me, Matt. <laughs> Blake, thanks for coming to Vale, spending some time here with us. Participating in the fun that we've had. The Inferno is definitely a little bit spicy. I wouldn't say yeah, the lime didn't help I feel like at all. it should be this, and then at the end it should be the limes. Right. <laughs> Which technically we did do. Well, yeah, I didn't think it helped. I don't either. Yeah, no. Okay. Uh, we want to thank all of you for watching. We want to thank Bob's for participating in our fun as well. Make sure that you tune into the scoreboard. We release two new episodes every week. Yes, two new episodes, Tuesdays, Fridays, 6 and 10 p.m. That's where you can find it on PCTV and TV8 Veil. Vale. It's a great time, and uh, we look forward to having everyone check it out as the school year goes on. We can't wait for this fall season to start. I know, we're getting so close. We're going to take a short break, and we'll come back with more show and fun. So stay tuned. Hey, everyone. Right now, we are here with Chris Hovel of Battle Mountain Voice uh, Golf. And thank you so much for being here today. We really appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you for having us. We uh, we want to talk to you and get to know you a little bit. We want to kick things off by just getting to know you, who you are coaching for, and how long you've been coaching, I guess I should say. Absolutely. Coaching, I've been coaching for about nine years, uh, one at the middle school level, seven at the high school level in basketball and football realms. And this is my first year as the head golf coach. I was the girls coach in the springtime, and now I'm taking over as the boys head coach. Wow. So you're coaching a couple of different teams. What's your athletic experience like? Did you play all three of these sports in high school? Golf is actually something I've only played as uh, just recreational. Mm -hmm. I competitively was a quarterback, played point guard, um, also played catcher and ran track in high school. So definitely a athletic junkie. I'm playing all these sports rec as well. Uh, but golf is something that definitely speaks to me. So I've kind of dropped all those other commitments and really put all my chips into the golf world. What specifically about golf made you want to kind of focus on it? Uh, the, the lifelong aspect, honestly, uh, being able to teach these boys and young ladies uh, that this is a sport that you not only can play for your, the rest of your life, but you can learn a lot about the world around you because you're, you're in a realm of really 
cultured people, I'd say, when you're playing golf. And you really have to grow up quick and mature. And I thought that was a really interesting place to be. Is that something that these kids realize early on as you're their coach? I would say it takes some learning. Yeah. Uh, we'll get kids that'll go out and sometimes they'll get upset with themselves and show some frustration. Uh, we like to work on the men mental aspect of them taking a second, calming down and really enjoying being outside, being with their friends and playing the game the right way. You can't, Rome wasn't built in a day, so mm -hmm. you can't get good quick. How is the team looking specifically? I want to just ask about how the team is looking compared to last year and what you're looking forward to. Huge. Uh, we have a lot of boys playing. Uh, the tough part about that, we only have five tournament spots per tournament, and we have 30 boys. But all are extremely excited to get out and try to get to practice uh, when they can. But working with them to do that is going to be a challenge just because of uh, the limited space we have here at Eagle Vale. Ryan Flom, the director of golf, has been wonderful in giving us a lot of opportunity. Mm -hmm. But really working with that large number poses a lot of competition but also a lot of scheduling issues. Uh, but right now the boys are excited. They're happy to be out. They're happy to be playing. So we're, we're excited to get, uh, get this thing going. That is absolutely fascinating. So five spots per tournament, but 30 boys on the team. So that makes for some competitive nature in the team, I would assume. Is that correct? Absolutely. Uh, last year, they didn't really have a way to get boys in and comp compete for those spots. So we're going to group them this year into varsity, tournament, JV and developmental groups, and the boys have to earn their spot into those positions by coming to practice, playing against each other. I mean, just yesterday we went out and played the par three with about 12 boys, and it felt like the PGA Tour. <laughs> they were out there uh, counting putts, no gimmies, writing down scores for each other. Uh, but we love that. They're, they're excited to compete, and they're doing it the right way. Are you looking at any specific golfer that you're really looking forward to this year? We've got some returning seniors this year. Uh, one of our seniors, Tyler Losa, who went to regionals last year, ran into some issues with uh, a mix up on a ball placement and kind of lost his spot by a couple of strokes. Really excited to him come out and have a redemption tour. Uh, we also have Owen Jackson, a junior. We have another young kid coming up named Bo Suman, who's been showing some low rounds like 82, 83. Excited to see a freshman go out and really push those older guys. This team is going to be absolutely fascinating. Can they jump from different spots? Like, can they jump from the developmental to the, to the JV, to the varsity? Are there going to be uh, availability for these kids? Absolutely. Um, but it's not all golf. We want them to play great golf, uh, but we have uh, a character development system called SLAG, which stands for Scholars, Leaders, Athletes, and Gentlemen. And so for a player to move up in their ranks, they don't only have to go out shoot a great round they have to they have to really commit to those values as a golfer uh, don't throw clubs sit in the front row of your classes respect your peers respect your administrators so we're we're really able to push that with this number is if you want to play in the higher group you got to be a well-rounded person and have character and then go out and play great golf too so we're excited to see young men kind of build themselves that's such a fascinating answer i really appreciate that as as someone who watches uh, a lot of high school sports specifically that's really really cool i i really appreciate that for any kid that's watching any kid on your team that, that will potentially be watching this what are you looking for in your ideal golfer what are you looking for in these kids uh, great people first and foremost and then people that respond to adversity people that can go out uh, get stuck behind a tree, get in a bunker, and then maybe not have the best shot out of there and then put it behind them. Have a smile going into the next hole. Realize they're playing golf and just work on getting better. Yeah. Chris Hovel, the head coach of Battle Mountain Boys Golf. We can't wait for the season to kick off. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Hello everyone, I'm here with Tyler and Conrad of the Battle Mountain High School golf team. Uh, guys, if you don't mind uh, introducing yourselves and saying what grade you're in. Uh, I'm Conrad Osborne, uh, going to be a senior this year, uh, fourth season playing golf, looking forward to it. Nice. And uh, I'm Tyler Losa, I'll be a senior as well, and I'm looking forward to this season. Awesome, thank you very much guys. Uh, I was just wondering, what sort of got you into the game of golf? Uh, what made you uh, start playing? Um, you know, when I was younger, my dad would just take me out, me and my brother, younger, um, and just, you know, out here just to hit balls just because it seemed like fun. Um, and I got hooked. So I've been playing golf for a while. Um, I was part of this, like, PGA Junior team growing up, and then I just 
continued my passion for the sport and I'm here now. That's amazing guys. So you guys have been playing for a while now. Uh, Conrad, uh, what uh, do you think you could beat your father in a game of golf? Um, I was able to last summer and the year before that, so definitely. <laughs> That's awesome. And how about you, Tyler? Uh, every year, my father and I, we have a rubber match, and uh, last season we ended up tying between winning matches. So it will be a determining season this year. <laughs> uh, that's very exciting for you guys. And uh, starting the season off, uh, what sort of tournament are you most looking forward to? Um, I really enjoy the ones that are close because they're courses that I've played. Mm -hmm. So the Vale and Gypsum courses especially, um, you know, gives you a little edge, makes it a little more fun so you're not, you know, guessing on every hole. Of course. And you, Tyler? Uh, this season we have a bunch more tournaments, so I'm looking forward to all the new courses uh, that I've nev not been able to play in the past. Yeah, and all these tournaments are going to be in Colorado, right? Uh, that's correct, yes. Yeah. Uh, what an amazing time. Uh, how many tournaments exactly are you going to be playing, uh, Conrad? Uh, I think there's a total of 13, and with the way we're doing it this year, the tournament players are going to shift around a little. So every tournament takes either four or five guys, and we'll have our top four or five. We'll, we'll have options during the week to kind of play off and push up into there um, to have the option to go to these tournaments. And uh, Tyler, do you feel like you have what it takes to be on a tournament team? Uh, I, I sure hope so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's great, guys. Um, and how do you feel about having a new coach this season? Uh, Tyler. Uh, yeah, so we have a new coach. Uh, we're so far so good. We've had more tournaments earlier practice season uh, to combat our shorter season. And so we're looking forward to a new coach, yeah. And how about you, Conrad? Um, I've had Hope as a teacher before. Um, love the guy. I'm looking forward to playing under him this year. Oh, that's, that's great to hear, guys. And uh, I assume you have been uh, playing unofficially over the summer as well. Uh, it's hard to play in the winter here. Um, so uh, how long exactly uh, is the seasons here? When, when do you guys, your, your guys' seasons end, uh, Conrad? So our, like the Chaz's season, so the actual like high school season, starts the, our first tournaments this Friday. Um, and then it ends, states are in October. Yes. Um, and then I know girls start in the spring, but then they start inside because we're on the Western Slope League. Um, but really our play season's like May to October. Fair enough. And uh, are you two going to be playing in this tournament? Uh, I'm going to be out of town, so I will not be. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I will be playing in this tournament, hopefully shooting a low score and bringing, bringing something back for the team. Uh, amazing, guys. Uh, well, thank you so much for coming out here. We really appreciate it and uh, hope you guys have a great season. Thank you so much for watching and make sure to tune in on Friday for more exclusive interviews and local high school game coverage. For Maddie Evans, Brent Ferraro, I am Blake O'Rulian and we will see you all on Friday.